Salut! Prost! In Lahayam. Welcome to Big Red Journeys. I am your host, Big Red. And on today's journey, we're back here at Ciro San Diego because it is the Craft Beer Festival. One of my favorite things here. As you can see, I am a craft beer legend. I am dressed appropriately. I even have a beautiful golden lager from Mother Earth Brewing Company. It's delicious. But we're going to check it out, have a few little tastings, try some of the delicious beverages, some of the foods, and just have a good old time. So if you care to follow along with me on this journey, cheers, and let's go. So stop number one is gonna be here. Number one, High Tide Brews. This is the little bar that's just to the left of the Explorers Cafe over there. And then, you know, you got the, the, sw the swing ride, the, and all the little kitty rides over there, just to kind of give you an idea. And this is where we're gonna go pick up our sampler lanyard. Just quickly going over what's here at the Craft Beer Festival. I went inside High Tide Brews, which is station number one here because I wanted to pick up my sampler lanyard. So I'm gonna open it up here, grab one of these. This is gonna actually show you where all the different locations are gonna be. Um, note of difference this year compared to last year, the majority, pretty much everything is just gonna be stuck here to the east side near Wild Arctic and where the Nautilus Amphitheater is with two offshoots here at the High Tide Brew and the new uh, beer garden that's over here behind us. There are two main options that you can pick up. You can pick up an eight uh, item sampler for $55 or a 12 item sampler for $70. There is a pass holder option. You get the 12 item, but your bonus is for the same price of $70, you end up getting three free items added on top of that. So now you get 15 for the price of 12. That's the best value, which of course is the one I ended up getting right there. So you can see 12 plus your additional three bonus sampler items. And here we got at the beer garden, which used to be where the old uh, submarine quest ride used to be. They got a DJ spinning the tunes there. And then not only that, they got a second trailer, the Explorers Beer Garden trailer, uh, presented with Ballast Point Brew. Stop number three is gonna be the Electric Eel Bar. Rightly so in front of the Electric Eel Ride. Looks like this one has Coronado Brewing and Hop Valley Brewing. So we're making our way over here to the main area of the Craft Beer Festival right here in front of Wild Arctic. Got station number four. This is one of the food items we got. So first thing up is station number four here. We got the Beery Best Bites. These are gonna be dishes featuring beer, uh, made with beer like Mike Hess's uh, Babe Kombucha or Thorn Brewing. Here's what's on the menu for today. Beer cheesesteak, a Chicago dog, tapache, glazed pork belly bow, and a lamb kofta. And those are the prices over there. A pro tip for you is also with the sampler, Try to figure out what each item ends up averaging out to when you take out $70 divided by 12. And then try to get items that are gonna be kind of like top dollar. That way you feel like you're getting the best bang for your buck. That's my tip for you. So here's what they got over at Beery Best Bites. That's gonna be the, the bao bun. Looks pretty nice. The uh, Philly cheese steak. So it's gonna have the cheese whiz or jalapeno cheese whiz on top of steak and onion. Uh, and then you can put an Old Bay seasoning in there. Very nice. And a traditional Chicago dog, you got the dog the peppers, the onions, the tomato, and the sauce on top. One thing I really like is that they got a lot of the craft brews are here in what they call Beer Row. So station number five is about eight or nine different beer stations. We got uh, Bivouac Cider Works with Babe Kombucha, Mother Earth Brew Company, Harlan Brew Company, Gamecraft Brewing, Golden Road Brewing, excuse me, excuse me. We got Alesmith Brewing Company, Stone Brewing, Pizza Port Brewing Company, and ending it with Carl Strauss Brewing Company. Lots of good options. And then one of the beers I was so interested in trying is actually from Gamecraft Brewing, but I was lucky enough the master brewer, the founder of the company, Scott. How you doing, Scott? Doing awesome. Good, good. Doing? Well, you're doing great. He is here. He's actually telling people about the different beers and how his company got started. It's a very interesting story. I'm going to link to the website to the to his uh, brewery. If you want to check it out, please do so. But he recommended, what was it, Cloud Cleaver? Is that what you recommended Cloud to me? Cloud Cleaver is our new generation tiki style hazy beer. So it's got a little bit of that New England character, a little pillowy, but a lot of fruit. So you, it's oh, to go for That's why I like this here. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. So first beer up for the day is going to be Cloud Cleaver from Graincraft. Let's give it a go. 
Ooh, that is good. If you do like a hoppy beer, this is good. It's got a very um, zesty, very light but fruity feel to it. Just the hops and the barley, that's all it makes it, but it gives it a great flavor. This is a good summer warm drink. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm giving it a, uh, I'm giving it a five out of five. And at the Craft Beer Festival Soundstage, right in front of Wild Arctic, they got live music playing. And on today's menu, we have Lexi Polito Duo. Let's listen in. Station number six is where you can get the Craft Beer Festival bar. As you can see, there's nothing on tap, but they have a whole lot of variety of different canned beers here. Whole lot of them. Fall, I see uh, Belgian Beaver, Cali Craft, Voodoo Ranger Society, a whole bunch of different beers here. Station number seven, which is right in front of the Penguin Encounter, is where you can pick up the lanyard as well. We were able to get it over at the Explorers Reef Cafe, uh, but they have it here as well. Again, just a reminder, here's the prices for you. The best value if you are a past member is the 15 for 70. I'm gonna put the math of how much that ends up being right here on the screen. But just make sure whatever you get, try to get items that are worth more than that. So you make sure to get the best bang for your buck. Station number eight is gonna be the weekly Good Sweets. This is gonna be another spot where you can pick up some food. This is gonna be food featuring dishes made with some of these great breeders such as Mother Earth Brew Company, Ale Smith, and Abnormal. We got the Cowboy Sunday, which I heard is very delicious. A mound of mashed potatoes with some uh, pulled pork. Cali cre Cream and Brulee. Oh, you already know I'm getting that one. I love Cream Brulee. They also have a Stout Ice Cream Float. That just sounds delicious. But I think we're going to get some food here, so we're going to get a Cowboy Sunday. So here we got the Cowboy Sunday. That's pulled pork on top of roasted garlic mashed potatoes, Ale Smith Speedway Stout Gravy, and then normally we topped with a cherry tomato. But I'm not a fan of tomato, so I asked for that to be 86. But it looks really good. It's dripping in that gravy. That's what I like to see. Okay, let's give it a try. Get a nice piece here. Get a load of the potato. Oh, it's nice and gravy. Let's go quick. That was delicious. Uh, extra gravy, when it comes to Thanksgiving dinners, all I want is mashed potatoes and just drown it in gravy. This is perfect for me, I love it. The pulled pork is actually very good that gravy is the best part. The mashed potatoes could be a little bit more garlicky, but overall it's definitely there. I'm giving it a four and a half out of five. Wanted to try something a little different, so we're gonna go to the Bivouac Cider Works, because I heard they got this beautiful blackberry cider. Let's give it a try. So we picked up, it's called the San Diego Jam. Very appropriate name here. So the biggest note is going to be blackberries. And look, it looks pretty good. It smells nice. Let's give it a try. Ooh, you know what? It's a little sweet, but then again, ciders are. And it's not tart. I like that. Um, not my not my most favorite of things, but I'm going to give it about a, a three and a half out of five. It's a good, good call for this one. Ended up grabbing some more food at number four, which is going to be Beery Best Bites. We ended up getting the Beer Cheesesteak, which is a classic Philly cheesesteak made with Mike Hess Shipwreck Lobber Cheese Sauce. And then we end up getting the lamb kofta with babe kombucha, Moroccan citrus, cucumber, tzatziki sauce. They look pretty good. We'll start off with the Philly cheesesteak. Oh. It has been sitting here for a little bit, so it's a little colder. But when I first took a little bit of a bite earlier, it was cold to begin with. So that's unfortunate. That already knocks it down. The meat's very unflavored. The cheese sauce is okay. It's like Velveeta, Velveeta melted cheese. It's really not that great. Not a big fan. The bread's a little dry. You know, I, two, maybe a two out of five. And then time for the uh, lamb kofta. Get in some tzatziki sauce. That was pretty good. Uh, sea World actually does Greek food pretty well, like when they have the Seven Seas Food Festival and they got the, uh, the lamb sliders. I always love that, it's delicious. This is pretty much the same principle here, just without the bun. Uh, but it just doesn't have the same spice, flavor. I don't know what it is, but there's something missing, a je ne sais quoi, something about it. So it's still pretty good. I'm gonna give it about a uh, three and a half out of five.
gonna take a little break from all the celebrating. Get a little, give it a little time to digest the food and the beer we've had so far. Maybe. And we're gonna check out the new Sea Lion Show. It's been around for a little bit now, um, but I have yet to see it. So we're gonna check it out. a good time i will admit the new sea lion show is just not as fun as the old one sea lions live sea lions tonight it just can't it doesn't carry a tune to it it's it's not as fun maybe you like it let me know in the comments below but uh, it was my favorite show and now i don't think it is anymore so not part of the craft beer festival but something i saw that was interesting was that there's this mimosa bar right here near the explorer's reef and it's kind of funny, they have, uh, looks like they have mimosas and a souvenir cup, mimosas, wine, some draft beer, souvenir cups. But yeah, look over there. Interesting, they got different, uh, I guess the juices in which you can make your mimosas in back there. Looks like like a mango, an orange, maybe a strawberry. So we're back at it. Let's go for round two of some food. We're gonna go for Baja Brews, which we're gonna, I'm gonna get the uh, Ensenada fish taco and the Ensenada fried shrimp taco. Those look like both good options. And there's an example of what you can get here. We got the fish taco uh, on a corn tortilla with slaw and white sauce. A michelada inspired shrimp cocktail. So it looks like it's a, got the shrimp, kind of like a ceviche inside of it. But then it looks like they put the Bloody Mary or the michelada tomato mix in there. And then you got the uh, Ensenada fried shrimp taco, same way as the fish taco. So here we go. We got an example of the Ensenada fried shrimp taco and the Ensenada fried fish taco. Uh, again, not a huge fan of coleslaw, so I removed it from there. It was only a red lettuce coleslaw, didn't really look like a traditional one, so. But that's okay, let's give it a try. Start off with the uh, fish taco. The fish, I could definitely tell, it's just a white fish, like a like a white cod. It honestly tastes nothing more than just a glorified version of like a, uh, what is it, Gordon's Fisherman fish stick. I'm a little disappointed in that. It still tastes okay, but the white sauce is not, not bad, that's good. Two, two and a half, maybe. 
the uh, shrimp taco. Looks like there's three different uh, shrimp in there, so. That tastes better. That tastes like an authentic fried shrimp taco. That tastes a little bit better. Could use like some guacamole, some aguacate, pico de gallo. I could use something like that, right? Um, but still good. This one goes up to about a three, three out of five. Next up, we're gonna do the Harlan Brewing Company. This is a Japanese lager. Nice, light, and refreshing. Let's give it a try. Oh, that is delicious. Uh, a little bit of a, uh, a hoppiness to it, but very light. If you're into, you know, a comparable beer would be probably like, a, a, you know, Sapporo. That's a good beer. This one's a step above it. Uh, I like it. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Again, trying something a little different. I ended up going with the other cider. This is the Albright by Bivouac Brewing. Um, the notes are going to be mainly vanilla. I'm excited for this one. Oh, that is very good. Th this one is delicious. The, the San Diego jam, that was really good too, but this, this is a good cider. Um, it's not too sweet, so it's palatable. It's just a really good one. I do taste a little bit of that vanilla, the floral hints. Very good. I give it a four out of five. And I think the final thing we're going to get for today is a little dessert. So we went back to Weedley Good Sweets to get the Cali Cream and Brulee. So this is going to be a vanilla ale creme brulee made with Mother Earth Brew Cali Cream and Ale. It looks pretty good. There you go. That's pretty good. That is really good. I definitely had a better creme brulee before in my life, but as creme brulees go, this is actually really good. Uh, I'm going to give it a, uh, a four out of five. Well, that is going to do it for today's journey here at Sea San Diego for the Craft Beer Festival. I had a great time. I hope you did as well too. I am stuffed. I tried so many delicious beers, some great food here, and overall I had a good time. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up for me. Second, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And third, hit that notification bell because I have a lot more journeys including some Halloween and some Christmas because it's right around the corner. And also make sure to follow me on social media, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Big Red Journeys. So for me to you, thank you and then I'll see you on the next journey. Bye-bye now.